Hello my friends, so in today's Blender video I'm going to be showing you how you can utilize surface imperfections on your objects to make your renders look pretty top tier. So without further ado my friends, let us indulge. So what are surface imperfections? Surface imperfections are anything from fingerprints to dust to scratches to grunge layers and these can be used to take your renders to the next level. So where do you find these? Very simple, you can go into Google. If you wanted to Google images, type in surface imperfections. As you can see here, we've got some grunge layers which is pretty cool. We've got some tileable imperfections. Even here, if you scroll up, it says fingerprints. This is great, we have fingerprints layer. Something that you'll notice straight away is traditionally these surface imperfections typically need to be in black and white. This is important. So all you need to do, go into Google, type in surface imperfections, or you can go to ArtStation to get some free surface imperfections, or even websites like sharetextures.com or ambientcg.com. I'll hopefully leave the links down below so you can get some of these textures for free. Okay, my friend. So here we are on Blender. How do we get started and how do we utilize surface imperfections? No problem, my friend. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is go to the shading editor or the shading tab. So here you can see I have my robot, which looks pretty good, sensational. It's just ahead at the moment, still working through it. But I'd like to add some surface imperfections. Now, if you've got my startup file, I have a shading tab right here. So you can click onto it and we literally have the shading window on the left-hand side. If you don't have my startup file and you have the default Blender, all you need to do is click onto this line right here right click and it should say vertical split click onto vertical split and then drag this all the way to the left just like this and you can see it split the window in two and created two windows then click this icon here and go down to shader editor and just like that we have the shader editor if we have this panel on the right open just press n on your keyboard and it will get rid of that window for you perfect so i'm currently in rendered view so it's easier for us to see what's happening in real time so my friends, the next step is as followed. Find where you saved your surface imperfection texture and drag it into your shade editor. And as you can see, we have an image texture right here. Perfect. Now, before I continue, please ensure that you have Node Wrangler enabled. Node Wrangler is an add-on which enables you to do several things like preview textures really quickly. So to enable it, go to edit, preferences, add-ons, type in Node Wrangler and make sure that this is checked and enabled. So now we can continue. Well, my friends, with surface imperfections, you mainly notice them in two ways. One, with depth on the surface, and two, is actually it looks like it's a different roughness on the surface. So with that, it gives you a clue of where we're gonna actually plug our image texture into. Yes, my friends. So once you have your surface imperfection, grab the color and place it into roughness. Straight away, we've got something. You can actually kind of see that we have some surface imperfections on our robot straight away, but we can't actually see this very well. So how do we increase the strength and how can we make this adjustable? Well, my friends, all you need to do is press Shift A, type in search, and you need to add a color ramp. And just like that, you can see we've added a color ramp. Now what this does, if I press Control Shift and left click, this one will be to preview the current node. And with this color ramp, we can actually increase the contrast of our surface imperfection. So now, if I go back to the principal BSDF and I preview this node, you can see that it's a lot more noticeable, the surface imperfections. And this is because of the color ramp. So if you move these values across, you're actually changing the contrast and how noticeable the texture is. Now there's two more nodes that I like to personally add when I'm doing surface imperfections. The first is an invert node. This will enable me to quickly inverse these values without having to flip them around. And what this does is instead of the base being shiny and the surface imperfections being rough, I can make the base rough and the surface imperfections shiny. So if I bring the factor of the invert all the way to one, you can now see <laughs> that the surface is now rough and the surface imperfections are shiny. And this is a pretty cool look. You don't need to stop here, my friends. If, for example, you were to put the roughness all the way to one, this effect is exemplified even more. So you can see that the surface is rough and the surface imperfection are metallic. And again, if I bring the invert all the way to zero, the surface is metallic and the surface imperfections are rough. And you can use the color ramp to adjust how visible you want the surface imperfections to be. And you do not need to stop here, my friends. What if, for example, you wanted to tile this more, or you wanted to make this bigger or smaller? No problem, I'm gonna show you how I can do that really quickly, my friends. So the first thing you need to do is click onto your grunge layer and since you have node wrangler enabled now press ctrl t and this has added a mapping node with this you're able to change the scale if you hold down shift and select all of these values by dragging down you can actually change 
the tiling of the surface imperfections, which is really good. Right now, it might be difficult to see because the robot's orange. I'm going to change this to black so it's more noticeable. And as you can see, if I go back to the scale, click onto the first one, hold on shift, drag all the way down, and then I can move this right and left. And you can see we're actually changing almost like the seed value of the surface imperfection, which is great. You could also change the rotation, of course, the location, etc. So this is how you would adjust the scaling, the rotation, location of the textures. And again, the color ramp is how you'd change and adjust the strength. The invert node here is just so you can very quickly flip it from rough to smooth to smooth to rough, etc. Don't just stop here, my friends. No, there's actually a really cool technique that I like to do. So what we're going to do is click onto the color ramp. We're going to duplicate this with Shift D. And we're going to plug this into the base color. We're then going to take the same grunge texture that we had before and plug the color into the factor. And just like that, you can see we have two colors at the moment. We have a black and we have a white. Now, my friends, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of these. So we have a grunge layer, which is colored as well as a base color of my robot. What does that mean? Let me show you. So for example, I wanted to make the base color of my robot orange. I'm going to go to the black value, click onto here, find an orange color, and then I'm going to go to my white value here. I'm going to make it like a brown color because I want this to kind of look like almost dirt. And that looks good. And just like that, I can adjust the parameters to make it more visible. This looks really cool. I can change the roughness again using this color ramp. Just like that, you can see we have a really, it looks significantly different. In fact, if I cut these nodes, you can see that this is what it looks like by default. If I change the color back to orange, just like that. And with the surface imperfection added, we have this. And it's actually really incredible. It's pretty fast that we got this effect and it looks pretty good, but we don't need to stop there, my friends. Remember I told you that surface imperfections are mainly seen with the roughness as well as the depth. So how can we use the nodes that we currently have right here to add the depth? Well, depth is normally done by either displacement or the normal map. Normal map kind of emulates depth without adding geometry, whereas displacement will physically add geometry. We don't necessarily want to add geometry because my robot is pretty low poly at the moment, which is good. So what I'm going to do is use the normal map. If we plug this into the normal map, it will give us the effect, but not the effect that we quite want. So what we're actually going to do is use a bump node. So I'm going to press shift A, search, type in bump, and I'm going to plug the normal of the bump node into the normal. I'm going to go to my color ramp, which is here and grab the color and plug this into the height. And you can see straight away, we've got some depth, but this looks way too strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the strength all the way down. I'm going to hold down shift. It's going to drag this to the left. So it's not so strong. And I'm going to change the distance the exact same way. So I'm going to hold down shift and drag this to adjust the distance. And just like that, you can notice is we have literal depth on our robot head, which is absolutely, it looks pretty good. Just to show you the before and after, I'm going to press M to mute this note. So that's without the depth. That's without it, that's with it, it's subtle. And again, we can increase the strap to make it more obvious. Without, with, and it's added a completely new layer. And really quickly, we've added surface imperfections to make our robot look pretty good. So to recap, I'm gonna add a frame around all of these nodes so it's just easier for you to see at a distance. So my friends, I've quickly added a frame around each of these so you can see exactly what we've done. So we've added the surface imperfection texture We've created a color ramp and plugged the color into the color ramp. We've then also added an invert node and plugged that into the rough roughness. Now we're using the color ramp to increase the strength and intensity of our surface imperfection. We then press control T on our texture to add a mapping and a texture coordinate node. And with this, we can change the scale, tiling, positioning, rotation, etc. We then duplicated the color ramp by pressing shift D. And to move this to the top, we then plugged the color of the texture into the fact of the color ramp and the color of the color ramp into the base color. And with this, we're able to adjust the colors of our robot as we want. Lastly, we added a bump node and we plugged the color of the color ramp into the height of the bump node and we plugged the normal into the normal of the principled BSDF. And with this, we're able to add depth and control the intensity via the strap. And that, my friends, is how you can very quickly add surface imperfections using a texture within Blender. It's actually possible to do this procedurally without actually using the texture. How that can be done is with 
a noise texture. So I'll show you very, very quickly how it can be done. It doesn't look as good as a texture, but just in case you don't have access to a texture, this is how you could do it. So I'm going to go back into my shade editor. I've deleted everything. I'm going to press shift A, search. I'm going to search noise texture. Now we're going to do the exact same thing as before. I'm going to add a color ramp also. And I'm going to plug the color ramp into the roughness. And I'm going to plug the, the factor of the noise texture into the color ramp. And if I press control shift and left mouse click, I can actually see the effects of the color ramp. So here I'm just going to adjust the contrast with the noise texture. We can adjust the scale. We can adjust the detail if we wanted to the roughness and the distortion. So I'm going to click back onto my principled BSDF control shift click. And you can very subtly see we have some form of surface imperfection here using the noise texture. Again, if I change this to black, you might be able to see a lot better. Yes. Just like that, you can see we've used the noise texture and the color ramp to produce a similar effect. And since it is using a node, a noise texture, this is fully procedural. So if I change the scale, it's going to update really quickly. If I change the detail, we can change the detail. In fact, we can actually change this from 3D to 4D and this will give us a W value. Think of a W value as like a seed. So I can keep my scale the exact same and by moving the W value across, we're just in the seeding. And just like that, my friends, we've got a very quick surface imperfection procedurally using just built-in nodes and then Blender. So if you didn't have access to any textures, this is what you could do. And you can do the exact same formula as before. You can duplicate the color ramp, plug this into the base color, plug the factor into the color ramp, change these colors to whatever you want. And just like that, we have <laughs> a similar effect. Okay, my friends, if you like this video, please share, subscribe, comment, like. If you found this video useful, then let me know in the comments below. If you would like me to make more Blender tutorials, then also let me know. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Peace.